Hey everybody, we're back with another big deck tech this week. It's 170. It's a brand new one here. Uh, hit subscribe if you're liking it. Uh, ring that bell so you'll know every single time a new deck tech happens or a new video happens about anything else right here on YouTube. But let's get to it. Yeah, let's get to the deck tech portion. This is going to be a deck. This is not so much about the commanders. This is an achievement unlocked deck. The achievement we are going for is winning by give it, getting the very last card out of someone's deck by using Tunnel Vision. It's five blue for a sorcery. It says, name a card. Target player reveals cards from the top of his or her library until the named card is revealed. If it is, that player puts the rest of the revealed cards named, put the rest of the real cards into his or her graveyard and puts the card with the chosen name on top of their library. Otherwise, the player shuffles their library. In case that's a little too many words for you right now, you're going to name a card and they're going to mill themselves until they hit that card. If you name a card that is not in the deck, all you will do is shuffle their deck for them. But you get to peek at everything inside it. They will reveal the entire deck to you while that happens. So, ideally, we're going to want to name the card that's on the very bottom of the deck. Right. And how are we going to do that? If we can do that, and then they can draw it, and then no other cards, and they will lose the game. They'll be out. That's the achievement we're going for. Can we take out a full table that way? Not if they can see it coming, but before <laughs> they know what you're doing, maybe you can get away with it. That's an even other achievement unlocked, just if you can actually win the whole game with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, great. <laughs> Um, so who are our commanders? We're playing, a, this is going to be a three-color deck. Uh, we're going for the teamer colors of red, green, and blue. And the commanders we've picked are more of some partner commanders for more placeholders. Uh, Tana the Bloodsower, two red, green for a legendary elf druid, two, two, trample. When Tana does damage to a player, create that many one, one green sapling creature tokens. There's no support for this commander in this deck. That's, <laughs> uh, we may cast it if we need a body, but that's probably it. However, Kaidel, Chosen of Krufix, 2 blue, green for a legendary human wizard, 2 3. Tap. Add colorless mana to your mana pool for each card you've drawn this turn. That's a card we will be able to take advantage in this deck. So Kaidel will be our main commander spiritually for the deck. Yeah, we're kind of cool. just splashing red in this deck, right? Yeah, a little bit. So little in bit, a way, yeah. like we're just splashing Tana, so she doesn't yeah. show up much anyway. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Um, yeah, so one of the cornerstones that we're going to brew around is we've got a lot of instants and sorceries that we need to help us out. So we've got a suite of cards that help make spells cheaper. Uh, and I'll tell you how that figures into things in a moment. But the Andy, do you want to let us know the first of them? Yeah, this is uh, Jace's Sanctum, three and a blue for an enchantment that says instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. And then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you can scry one. Uh, pretty straightforward anytime. This, this, this is going to just uh, obviously cheapen those spells. Let us dig to what we actually want to get, which is tunnel vision. Yep. Uh, and then something like Goblin Electromancer also makes an appearance, among others. 2-2 uh, two, two for blue-red. It's currently in Guilds of Ravnica. Uh, instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. Same deal. Um, and I'm not going to go into it, but a lot of our ramp and card draw, we've I've specifically found ones that have one pip in their casting cost. So that if we get a couple of these spell cheapeners out, we'll be able to draw a couple of cards for one blue, ramp out a couple of cards for one green, uh, keep digging deeper, keep having more action to do. So that's kind of like the main engine that gets this deck's momentum rolling. Yeah. And then we you want to you want to get some stuff in here that's going to work with tunnel vision, am I right? Absolutely. So how are we going to do that? What are the ones that are going to really work with tunnel vision? We want to put opponents cards on the bottom of the library so that we know what that is so we can name it with tunnel vision well one of the best and most repeatable versions of this is junk troller for generic for the artifact creature golem it's a zero six with defender uh, and it's from original ravnica uh it says tap put target card in a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library so mm -hmm. again tunnel vision name it name that card great the only thing you don't want to put on the bottom with tunnel vision is a basic land because there will be probably other basic lands in their deck that you'll get to before you hit that bottom one, obviously. 
Yeah, and and one interaction with Tunnel Vision I want to remind you of is that it, the card that you name will be the last card in their library, so they will get to draw it and use it. So you also mm-hmm. don't want to put something that would like save them somehow or yeah. eliminate you. Don't right? put one that like shuffles their graveyard into their library. No, 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 no. Uh, unless you also have one of your cards that draw that make target player draw cards if you can make target player draw two cards once there's one card left it doesn't matter what you put on the bottom that's true. fine as well true uh, another fantastic card for this purpose is grazing kelpie three and a simic hydrib uh, hybrid hydrib three and a simic hybrid <laughs> for a two three beast and you can pay a simic so either green or blue sacrifice grazing kelpie put target card in a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library and it has persist so you can it comes back and you get to do it more than once so you can kill the second player with tunnel vision yeah there you go you i mean you also do have to get tunnel vision back but yes we'll we'll, we'll talk about that and so uh, and, and one of the things and we haven't really talked a lot about tunnel vision but before you have all your engine going before you're able to like know what's on the bottom of your opponent's libraries you could make a guess you could probably say sol ring and get half of your opponent's deck out there maybe maybe you get super lucky and you just happen to name a sol ring and it's the last card that's one for the record books if you just do that <laughs> yeah. like the natural way yeah, yeah i wouldn't <laughs> recommend trying that but yes <laughs> no. No, but I think one of the first uses for tunnel, for tunnel vision, which would be great, um, uh, would be to just do ourselves on that. And we'll get into that in a second. But before we get into some specifics on it, shall we go for some neat moves? Working on a neat moves. Neat move number one. So as, as you know, we want to know what's on the bottom of our opponent's libraries. So... We're running a few cards that do the clash mechanic. Here's an example. Recross the paths. Two and a green for a sorcery. And I'll remind you that there's a very good chance this card will cost a single green for us. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a land card. Put that card into play and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Clash with an opponent. If you win, return recross the paths to its owner's hand. So... You can, you'll put a land into play, which is ramp, which is what we want. Uh, if you win the clash, you'll get this card back in your hand. And so for a single green, you'll be able to do it again uh, if you win the clash. Uh, and so you can very potentially get a lot of mana out this way if you keep winning. But how does clash work? Each clashing player reveals the top card of his or her library, then puts that card on the top or bottom. A player wins if his or her card had a higher converted mana cost. So lands have CMC of zero. So if you have a land, you'll probably lose the clash. (laughs) Uh, You have to win the clash. So if you tie, if you both flip lands, then you don't win. So you don't get the bonus. But we are just hoping that our opponent puts their card on the bottom of their library so that we know what it is. Even if it's a land, if it's not basic we'll still be able to name it and we know there's only going to be one copy of it so if they have a land on the top and they're like well i can't put this on the bottom because if i do you'll tunnel vision me once they know they're like well great then if you never move that card off the top and i never move my card i will always win this clash so i'll just keep doing this and getting this card back until you decide to like either just quit and put the land on the bottom or, I mean, you know, there's a possibility we just lose the clash to begin with. But that's a fun, neat move, I think, with this card. Yeah, that's interesting. You'll, yeah, you'll, I mean, you will have different cards. So you won't necessarily always win, right? Like, you can clash. Oh, that's it, right. Because, yeah, because your top will change Your top every will time. change, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, So you might tie. But it's, 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 it is interesting that if you have Tunnel Vision in hand, they, unless it's a basic land, they can't move their card so you're just getting kind of that value of you're getting scries off of it at the very least right like you're getting the 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 scry for you and they don't really get to scry yeah cool uh uh, this next one is really neat so this one works well with all the the spell cheapeners we have in here and it's it's kind of it's a pretty impulsive card it's a card that is very red but 
not usually, I think, a real popular commander card, but in this deck it shines. It's called Commune with Lava. X, red, red. It's an instant. Exile the top X cards of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play these cards. Or those cards. So it's an instant. So you wait until the, the, the end of turn before your turn. And then hopefully you've got a bunch of mana up and you've got a couple of little spell cheapeners there. So you can really, you can probably fire this off for a decent amount, right? Six, seven, eight. I think anywhere in there, you're, you're pretty happy. And then either come across that uh, that tunnel vision that you want or cast a lot of these, again, cheap X spell or ch sorry, cheap uh, like draw spells and things like that. Exactly what Sean's been talking about. Clash a couple times. Why not, right? Like you'll just be able to get a lot of what this deck wants to do done if you commune with Lava and have one or, or you know, two would be great of the, the things that make your instances of sorceries cheaper. Yeah, ideally you'll be able to empty everything you've exiled except the lands because you'll only play one of those per turn. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's fine too. If if we if worst case scenario we end up moving like eight lands out of the next top of our deck, that's fine too. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's that's not what you're loving to do, but it but it's going to get you to more gas, which is what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Whenever that happens, whenever you like, you get to select and you flip lands. I always feel bad that I didn't get the thing I wanted. Yeah. But then I have to remember, it's like, well, at least I'm not going to draw these for the next four right? turns in a row. Exactly. At least my next six turns aren't dead, right? Like that's yeah. that's always yeah. You have to look at that bright side every time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, one more neat move, Andy. You discovered this neat move actually. Uh, I didn't think of this at the first time. This is a creature called Brutalizer Exarch. Five and a green for a cleric. It's a three-three. When Brutalizer Exarch enters the battlefield, you choose one. Search your library for a creature card. Reveal it. Then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. Or put target non-creature permanent on the bottom of its owner's library. That's what we want. If there's like a problematic enchantment, and as long as it won't be problematic when they cast it again as their last card, yeah. uh, you can just throw it on the bottom of the library. It gets around indestructible. It gets around like, well, I mean, that's the main thing. <laughs> you're not, you're <laughs> yeah. not destroying anything. It's just yeah. going to the bottom. This is a card that I, rune players know really well. Any kind of like blinky deck knows really well because this card is so strong. Uh, being able to, yeah, like tuck a, a, a troublesome enchantment or or artifact is very helpful. Or being able to basically worldly tutor for, a, a, you know, your next most important creature is, is amazing. And in this uh, deck specifically, um, a card that, I don't know, we are is this like a pet card of ours now that we've used it twice as Ethereal Usher? So you yeah. can use Brutalizer Exarch to get Ethereal Usher, which then you draw it, and then you can pay its transmute cost, which is one blue blue, and that will allow you to search for another card in your deck with the same CMC, which is six, which also happens to be Tunnel Vision's CMC. So like Brutalizer Exarch in a weird kind of little bit of a chain way can get you to Tunnel Vision, which is if you don't have it, that's exactly what you want to do. And if you do have it, it, it enables it so well that you can just... You know, throw something on the bottom of their library, throw their, you know, whatever, their mana rock on the bottom of their library, and then you can tunnel vision them out. Oh, mana rocks are the perfect thing to tunnel vision to. It's like, that don't help you if it's your last card, a little bit yeah, of like, ramp. <laughs> you'll basically always have a target for Brutalizer Exarch. Like, this card does work, I think, at every stage of the game. Yeah, great card, fantastic card. Ne the neatest of moves. <laughs> uh, another card that I think is going to do work in this deck, it's pretty neat, is Metallurgic Summonings. Three blue blue for an enchantment. We know this one. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, and there's plenty of them in there, you create an XX colorless construct artifact creature token, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. Most of our stuff is three or four, so we'll get a lot of three, three, four, fours, which on their own aren't that great. But once we have six or more artifacts and this does make artifacts we can pay three blue blue to exile metallurgic summonings and return all instant or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand and if we're able to cast most of them for like one or two mana that's going to be a powerful turn uh of course this is one of the many effects we definitely want to get back tunnel vision because if we got to kill more than one person with it we got to get it more than once you got to right? get it so, more than once yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, Metallurgic Summonings is just so great. I mean, this is this is a staple of any deck that wants to run a ton of instants and sorceries. And like yeah. those those little those little constructs you can make, they can they they're great blockers. You know, they team block well. You know, they do a lot of stuff. They do a lot more than than you might think. The so threat of activation is real. Like you, your opponent can't afford to attack with a seven seven that they care about. Yeah. If you're just like, because like you could just cast a couple of instants and like. 
I know that if it's by CMC, but we all know how Commander works, especially if you're able to get spells for cheaper. Like you could drop big CMC spells for mm-hmm. less than the amount of mana you have open. Yeah, absolutely. And it should be noted also, this is something that I always forget about Metallurgic Summoning, is you do need six or more artifacts to be able to activate the five mana, uh, get all your instances of sorceries back. So that is something you need to keep track of. Yeah. Um, and another one... Uh, this, this, I'll let you talk about this because this is something you mentioned earlier, but tunnel visualing ourselves is a real option in this deck. Yeah, I think that's our first step with tunnel vision unless we happen to get all our key pieces. So on average, if you tunnel vision for a random card in your own deck, you know, I guess, you know, by mathematical average, you'll get half the cards in your graveyard. Like that's just the, how the math of it works over time. So we're going to pro- I think our best first choice is Shreds of Sanity. Two and a red for a sorcery. Return up to one target instant card and up to one target sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Then discard a card. Exile Shreds of Sanity. So here's why Shreds of Sanity is such a great target. Let's assume we tunnel vision ourselves to Shreds of Sanity and we put in 35 cards in our graveyard. We're going to get to return Tunnel Vision as our sorcery. And any of the instants, maybe a counter spell to protect our game, maybe an instant that puts a spell on the top or bottom of players' libraries, um, or maybe just another card to get back more cards from our graveyard. This is an excellent first stop to go with that. Uh, I was... Yeah. 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 I think um, tunnel visioning ourselves is, yeah, is a real move. Uh, Shreds of Sanity, though, I mean, what happens if you then discard tunnel vision? There's a a bit of a... You're gonna choose. I mean, I mean, if you if you have an empty hand, that would be awful. Uh, yeah. But like, you don't discard randomly. You choose what you discard. Oh, so, I thought it was random. Okay, it's not. I was thinking random no. for sure. There is I was another card gamble, that does that's that. That's why. Yeah. Because uh, gamble has that ability, and I thought maybe that's something that was um, no, something that but, was put on. But yeah, you're right. So you're not. So you're never gonna discard it, which is also great. But another good one, just to like, it's kind of just like a. It's the same uh, ability, but this one, if you tunnel visual it, if you tunnel vision it as well, uh, Mystic Retrieval is a really good one, uh, and that's in this deck. It's three and a blue to get an instant or sorcery, but it also has flashback for two and a red, so you can do it from the graveyard. So this one's great as well. Yeah, and you yeah you might just mill that accidentally on your exactly. way to Shreds of Sanity. Yeah, I, I know in Epic Experiment this one's just so great because it works with that. It works with from the graveyard, which is something that's Ugh. so good. Yeah, and then of course, what, I mean, you know, one of the things we are going to hopefully shreds of sanity back along with our tunnel vision is hinder one blue blue for an instant counter target spell. If that spell's countered, put it on the top or bottom of its owner's library instead of into that player's graveyard. If your opponent sees you pull back shreds, or uh, sorry, pull back tunnel vision and hinder, if your opponents know you have these two <laughs> cards in your deck, you're trouble. You're trouble for them. Yeah, <laughs> like they, yeah. they need to watch out for that. Yeah, they they need to have a counter spell ready to go. Yeah, absolutely, and that's one of the reasons Hinder is actually good as well because you might just tunnel vision for another reason, and you need your own counter spell to fight their counter spell. You can get some counter wars with this because once people know you have tunnel vision, they'll be they're just holding onto the counter spell because of it, right? They have to. Yeah, they have to. Yeah. Uh, great. There you go. Some very neat moves there. Lots of neat moves. I'm sure there's like as you play through, you tunnel vision allows for so many neat moves. Yeah, it's a neat move enabler. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, right? Like, it just it just does so much. It, I love this, the fact that you can mill yourself to find a card you need. Uh, and then that also just... But that will also help get the deck rolling. Like, it's just, it does double duty that way. Then it's also your kill. I mean, just hope that no one dissipates it ever. Yeah. Yeah, really. Truly. Which is why you kind of have to have your own counterspell ready... Obviously, if the, you're not playing against a lot of blue, don't worry about it too much. But man, yeah, that that would feel bad because that's kind of I mean, your whole deck. But there are then, other ways to win. We're we're not we're not highlighting a ton of them here. But you've got a lot of creatures that care about stuff in graveyard. You got a lot of big creatures that will help you stay alive until you get this thing type of thing going. And truly, that's it's it's almost like pillow forty in that way. But but it's not really leaning too hard on it. It just has a couple of really good creatures. Multani's in here, for example. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, we, we're not going to talk about the creatures, but most of the creatures are the variety that get bigger over time, either mm-hmm. with more lands in play or the more spells you and your opponents cast. So, you know, we have some pretty good defensive creatures sitting around and who can swing in for big damage. Just as a quick example, I had a Mana Gorger, Gorger Hydra close a game because it was a 30-30 at one point. So I was like, oh, Crazy. okay. Crazy. 
Uh, what about the surprises and or discoveries of this deck? Ooh, I found a couple. Uh, I think, so if you're looking at making spells cheaper, if you have a few effects in your deck that make spells cheaper, I think you need to look at Petals of Insight. Four and a blue for a sorcery, arcane. That's a lot of mana for a sorcery already, but if you can maybe pay three or two for this, it becomes excellent. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may put those cards on the bottom in any order. If you do, return Petals of Insight to its owner's hand. Otherwise, draw three cards. So I think five mana is definitely too much for this effect, but if we can reliably get it cheaper, being able to just look at three and then say, no, I don't want those three. Next three, no, I don't want those. Next three, ooh, I do want these three. Like that's a pretty neat use for it. Uh, It helps if we care about the number of spells we cast because we can keep casting this over and over if we want to. Yeah, if you got the mana for it, seems like it, it can be really good. Yeah. Um, an- another one here uh, you've got is Woodland Guidance. Right. Three and a green for the sorcery. It says return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Clash with an opponent. If you win, untap all forests you control. And then you can remove. And then you have to remove uh, Woodland Guidance from the game. So you have to exile it. But four mana to you like uh, uh, grave dig a card. So you can grab an instant. You can grab a sorcery. You can grab whatever. Tunnel vision. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then untap and potentially get the mana right back. That's worth it. Plus, you also get this clash, or you get a scry on top of it. Like, this is a lot of things that individually might not be totally worth uh, a card, but the fact that they're all stapled onto this one card, I think is this is a really cool discovery here. Yeah, I don't think it's primed in this deck necessarily. We do like mm-hmm. those regrowth effects, uh, but we don't have a ton of forests because we're a three color deck. Mm-hmm. But if you're mono green, give this give this card oh, wow, a look yeah. for your mono green decks. Definitely, right? Like, especially if you're if it's like a ramp. I mean, I can only imagine mono green probably does want to do that. Probably so the, ramps. So, so the clash probably is even something that you're probably going to win most of the time, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. So, so that way you can get that mana back. Like it's, it's, uh, it's interesting, man. I think this is a, yeah, this is a neat, a neat find for sure. Yeah. Maybe not for this deck, but for those mono green players, think of this. Yeah. Take a look at it for sure. Uh, well, I mean, uh, interests and sorceries are, sorry, surprises and discoveries. After that comes the budget report. This is where we take all of the cards, find out which one of them is on the bottom of our wallet, and which ones get paid for. <laughs> uh, this is a very this is interesting because this is, I think, the closest we've come since getting rid of the hard fifty dollar rule to actually nailing that our old budget target. Close, uh, sixty two bucks. We might have done one that was actually under fifty dollars already, but yeah, sixty two dollars for this deck. So it is not it is not expensive. Nope. Uh, and half of the value comes in the most expensive nine cards. Uh, so if you want to make a few cuts out of those nine cards, you will definitely get it below 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. The most expensive card in the deck is Baral, Chief of Compliance. One in a blue for a legendary human wizard. One, three. Instants and sorceries you cast cost one less. It's part of our suite of, dam- of spell cheapeners. Having a few of these out is excellent. Um, since the deck is pretty cheap already, I'm going to say keep them. Yeah, I think you keep them. I think you want to get as many of these uh, spell cost reducers as you can. Baral's not only a great one, he's a very cheap one. He only costs one and a blue. Like, he's a little easier to re- to remove because he's a creature, but I think I think you definitely keep him. Yeah. Um, next is Soul Ring, which we all are aware of and is about three twenty-five, three fifty, three dollars wherever, you know, somewhere in that realm. Uh, so it's kind of a ubiquitous card and we don't, talk about it much in the budget report so skip down to the next one uh, uh we'll have is primal amulet which is another uh, a spell reducer uh it's the four mana artifact instant sorceries cost one less to cast and every time you cast an instant or sorcery you put a charge counter on it then if there are four or more charge counters on it you may remove those counters and transform it into primal wellspring which is a land that taps for any color of mana and then when that mana is spent to cast an instant or sorcery spell you copy that spell and choose new target so it doubles up your spells this can double up your um your uh your tunnel vision this can double up any of the draw spells you have and stuff like that so i think same thing i think this card is so good so useful whether or not it's it's uh transformed um that i think you keep this in there for only only like three bucks that's not bad 
Absolutely. And if we're not going to count Sol Ring as one of our most expensive cards, then Vandal Blast becomes the next most expensive. Three bucks. Vandal Blast, such a useful staple. It just keeps getting more expensive because it does a unique effect. Uh, out of curiosity, I looked up how many other cards destroy all artifacts, period, on all mm-hmm. sides of the board. There's one that costs four mana. And for one additional mana, we only hit all of our opponents. I think Vandal Blast, as highly rated as it is, is still underrated. Yeah, it's five mana. There's a four mana spell that destroys all artifacts, and then there's a six mana one, right? That's what you're saying. And like, yeah, Vandal but it, Blast but it is just better. All be- artifacts. Yeah, exactly. Vandal Blast is just better because it doesn't hit yours. You I always. Think... Sorry, go ahead. You would think you'd have to pay a seven or eight to get a one sided effect know. like this. No. But not no, and, and and or you would think like heavy red. No, four and a single red. Like the <laughs> the, the, the like sister card to this it, it, from this set in red uh, is um, uh, what's the one that deals four to everyone? Oh, oh, oh Mizium Mortars. Mizium Mortars, and that's three red for the for the overload cost. I yeah. think. Yeah. I think you're right. Um. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways, like the fact that Vandal Blast is yeah, it's three and three red. That's nuts, and it only deals four damage to everyone. The fact that that Vandal Blast is only the one red and it's only five is, yeah. This is a commander too good. staple. Too good, too good. Too good. And only three bucks, so keep it in, for sure. Yeah, man. Uh, great stuff. Um, well, uh, what about the three stars? What about the ones that really work the most, do the most work here? Yeah, I mean, since we're doing a lot of recursion, since we want recursion and we want to cast spells a lot, we're going to run the Marari Conjecture. That's star number three. Four and a blue uh, and it's got the saga for, th- for three stages. When you cast it, you're going to return target instant from your graveyard to your hand. Probably a counter spell, maybe a hinder. Second phase on your next draw step, you're going to return target sorcery from your graveyard, probably tunnel vision, or just another way to ramp or draw some cards. And then on the third stage, your next draw step, until end of turn, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, copy it, you may choose new targets. That's very powerful. And especially, I want to especially remind us, like, we're going to be operating in a state where most of our stuff costs one, two, three cheaper. So when we're doubling everything that costs one mana, it becomes very powerful. The timing on on sagas is is interesting, and it's the part that I haven't sat down and thought about really from a deck building perspective. Is like when do I want to cast the Morari Conjecture? And it's kind of yeah. when you you've got things kind of rolling a little bit. Um, but 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 this one definitely can help you get there. Also, I think normally it's like okay, I cast this when I'm ready to go. But this one actually, you can this can help you get there, and I don't I don't think that's a bad use of the card at all. Yeah, I think we should aggressively cast our cards, even if they are also pieces for our like achievement. Just mm-hmm. cast them, get them going, because you can get them back from the graveyard quite easily. And uh, number two star is a Rito Lantern. It's the two mana artifact that allows you to pay three generic to put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. This can work double duty in that, yes, it, it obviously uh, partners with Tunnel Vision, uh, but it can also, like, in a pinch, put a card that you want back into your library, obviously. Uh, I think that's probably the thing you're going to do the least with it. Um, but if you have no other way to get your Tunnel Vision back, this could do that for you. Yeah. I yeah, mean, for sure. I, you probably don't, just because I think you have more ways to get it out of the graveyard than not. But you never know what's going on in the, in the game. But Rite of Lantern is just going to be able to get to put, uh, like, you could spend, you know, nine mana, find put the cards that you want on each of your opponent's libraries. And then if you have some way to double, like, with a Mirari Conjecture or something, you can just win the game with it. With Tunnel Vision. Oh, my goodness. Okay, because we're in the middle of the three stars of the deck, let's finish this. But I just had a last second game time brainstorm. Oh, wow. I want to highlight after this. Okay, so, bonus. Okay, okay bonus. So so what's number, the number one star? Number one star is Conqueror's Galleon. Four generic for a vehicle. 210 when it when it's a creature. It crews for four. When it attacks, exile it at the end of combat, then return it transformed into a land. Uh, if it's got 10 toughness, there's very likely going to be an opponent you can hit with this where they will not be kill it back. You yeah. might even be able to make a deal. And if you transform it, this is what it's all about. It does everything we want to do. Conqueror's Foothold. Tap, add colorless. Two and tap, draw a card, then discard a card. We can discard stuff that we want in the graveyard for some reason if we want to put it on the bottom for any reason. Four and tap, draw a card. That's excellent. Six and tap, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Why not a tunnel vision? Why not a counter spell? Yeah. Why not a ramp? Uh, this card does everything we want. Does it all. Yeah, really great. Here's my surprise random brainstorm. I can't believe we hadn't thought of this before. Okay, what is it? So 
We got Raito Lantern. Yeah. We're going to put Tunnel Vision. Are we going to put that on the bottom of our deck? No, it doesn't matter. Here's what we're going to put on the bottom of our deck if it has died or it has been killed already. Um, who is it? What's his name? It's a two drop from Ixalan that lets you take another turn if you have Ascend, but he goes on the bottom of your library. Time Stream Navigator? Time Stream Navigator. Yeah, seems like that's that's something so, that could work with this deck. Time Stream Navigator's on the bottom of our own deck. We say Tunnel Vision on ourselves, Time Stream Navigator. Now our deck is empty except for Time Stream Navigator. We can take infinite turns with that. Because draw it'll it. be the draw it, Two, play it. Pay four, tap. But you, you So you do it during the upkeep, right? right so like yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so you you sacrifice it during your upkeep to put it on the bottom before you draw to kill yourself, and then you draw it, the thing you just sacrificed, and then you cast it, then you're in your next upkeep. Do it again, do it again, do it again. How do we win, though? I don't know. Haven't thought that far. <laughs> <laughs> but is, so, so this card's in the deck, and this is something that can be done. I mean, it's not in the deck, uh, but I just thought that is a that, that is something that maybe, like, can we use that to win? I, I think you'd have to have enough in your hand to also, like, manipulate. I don't know. I don't know if that works or not. <laughs> well, there you go. Last minute brewing from Sean right there. Thinking of a pretty potent card to toss into this one. Uh, time stream navigator. Does it affect the budget? Uh, it probably would. Yeah, this card's about, uh, oh, no, one. It's only, like, two bucks. So, yeah, this, uh, anytime you're dealing with bottom of the library stuff, time stream navigator is something you should think of. Uh, can't believe sure. i hadn't can't believe can't... i hadn't <laughs> well there you go uh whether or not you want to include a time stream navigator in your version of this deck uh, please let us know and uh let us know how you think uh this will help you win otherwise that is uh it for this week thanks for listening thanks for watching S hit subscribe give us that five star review on uh itunes if you're if you're listening via that uh yeah um otherwise thanks for listening and we'll see you guys next week bye bye Big thanks to all our patrons who make these episodes possible. Yeah, and if you want to check out more comedy videos, check out our Brews News playlist. Make sure you follow us on Twitch TV to see when we play live. If you want to chat with us, head over to Twitter. We're at Commander's Brew. And please hit subscribe to Ding the Bell and find out when we got new stuff coming out. See you next time. Bye.